So basically what I have here is a 2000, this is what I've been told. I, I can't find a VIN plate anywhere that tells me or confirms any of this, but this is what I was told by the guy that sold me this go-kart about a month ago. Right? So this is a 250cc motor. This is a 2008 Moto Bravo. Moto Bravo, if you go search this buggy, I don't think you're going to find it anywhere. I, I, I just, this is probably the, like, the only one that they made, apparently. So... That said, this frame, and I don't know what it is, some Chinese factory in China is just pumping out these frames and with these engines and with this these shocks and with all these other electronics that are like exactly identical to other uh, models that you hear uh, that become kind of, you'll as you're doing your research, you'll kind of hear they become sort of popular, like the Tau or the Rocketta GK19, you'll, you'll come across this. This is basically identical to the Rocketta GK19 go-kart. And I'm talking like the way it's welded, the way it's wired, the, the engine, you know, the drivetrain, I mean, everything. It's like, this is basically a GK19, even though it says Moto Bravo on the side. So, um, once we, once I give you kind of an overall tour of the go-kart and, and the lay of the land, we're going to go down to my computer and I'm going to pull up a wiring schematic that's going to make this conversation so much easier and so much clearer. Uh, and then I'll make the schematic available to you. Um, I picked this go-kart up for 450 bucks and she is not much of a looker right now. So uh, no seats and uh, there's a lot of, you know, oxidation on the paint that needs to be kind of polished off. And we'll see if we... Uh, we want to doll it up to a blood orange color or something that looks a little more sporty. But um, I did get the engine to start, so let me give you just a couple seconds on that. I did get the engine to start. Uh, I have an electrical problem that I've I've now tracked down and I, I've, I've figured out what the problem is. Unfortunately, I'm waiting uh, on, on the, the uh, UPS is delivering a part that I need, an electrical part that I need, uh, so that I can actually start the engine. But I know I know it will start. <laughs> Because uh, through some band-aiding, I've been able to get the engine to turn over and idle for just a couple of seconds before the engine dies. And it's an electrical problem. It's not the carburetor or anything like that. Uh, really quickly, when I bought this go-kart, and this is just some, this is just some background for you, uh, because if you're interested in, in getting into one of these projects, I just it's, it's something to consider. Um, when I, I actually was, was planning on ripping this engine off and just starting over with the Harbor Freight's, you know, v, uh, V650 uh, uh, twin motor that they sell for like 800 bucks. Um, and I was just gonna like, this thing was just gonna rip. Right? Uh, and by the way, I did a compression test on it when I first got it and it was only, it only had like 15 PSI uh, coming out of it. So I thought, okay, well that's probably not a hole in the top of the piston, which is good, but it could be bad rings and, and a valve job that needs to be done. After a quick valve adjustment, which they actually do on these on these buggies, on these GY6 engines, they actually do have an external valve adjusting capability, which is pretty sweet. So I adjusted the valves. It took me like five minutes, and I immediately went from 15 PSI up to 90 PSI. And then I was able to, that's when I was able to get the engine to fire up. It started almost immediately. I was just like, wow, that's, that was really simple. Um, now... Uh, 90 PSI, uh, sorry, just to sidetrack, 90 PSI is kind of at the bottom of your green bar. If you're talking like, okay, what's the green zone uh, as far as compression is concerned? 90, again, is about the bottom end. If you hit like 89 PSI, as, for example, you probably really should be replacing your piston rings. You know, if you hit 80 PSI, you're low and, and the engines, you're just not going to have power. You know, your engine's not going to run very well. You probably need to do some valve work or you need to pull the rings out, the piston rings out and replace them, something to get that up to maybe about the 120 or 130 range. Uh, anyways, sorry, side side sidetrack. So what I want to do is take you through the electrical. This video is all about electrical. Uh, me figuring out, uh, I'll touch on me figuring out like what setup is this? Is it a DC setup or an AC setup? Uh, and if you're not familiar with that term yet, yeah, you definitely will be uh, now that you're in the world of buggies. So Chinese buggies. So they, they let's start up at the front here. We have an aftermarket ignition setup. Okay. This is actually a Honda, you know, common Honda key switch that, they, that they've put on here. Okay. So the key switch has off, 
It has auxiliary on and start that's spring loaded, just like you would expect in an ignition, right? Um, on the dash, I've got a temperature, uh, temperature gauge, I've got a speedometer, I've got a kill switch. It's important to note that this there is a kill switch and a key, okay? I'll touch on that in just a second. I've got a headlight switch and then a horn button that it's obviously just doesn't even work, okay? Uh, so up front, that's pretty much what we've got uh, for electrical. Let's touch on the kill switch for a second. The reason that I think they added this, after, at least they attempted to add this aftermarket ignition switch is because they actually had to use the kill switch to shut the engine off. And they, 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 they whoever owned this decided they wanted the key to turn the engine off. So all they did is there's a black and white wire that, that comes off of the kill switch and it comes down the harness right here. And then we have a black uh, wire with a white stripe here that Ys in and, and basically does a half-ass connection right here at, uh, at this junction. Basically, the ignition harness and the kill switch are have become one. They've wired those together. So what that means is, is the kill switch will pretty much never be used and you'll, you'll just be able to use the key as your, as your kill switch. Okay, I'm gonna go into some detailed wiring. Uh, uh, but that said, I still wanted to give you kind of uh, the physical layout. So again, Honda, Honda key switch. I think the other, the owner just couldn't ignore the colors. So he was trying to make square pegs fit in round holes by lining this red up with that red and that black with that black and that yellow with that yellow. That's not going to work. You guys can't do that. You have to understand the wiring of the ignition. What is touching when you're in the off position? which contacts are, are touching when you're in the on position, which contacts are touching when you're actually engaging the starter, okay? You need to understand that. And, and then you have to understand where your wires actually come from elsewhere in the go-kart so that you know where to put them. So and when you do this, forget about trying to match colors. It's just, you're gonna waste so much time doing that uh, and spinning your wheels or not spinning your wheels. Uh, see what I did there. So let me quickly address this. When I'm in the off position, okay, off, key is off, 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 off. You have the two middle contacts and notice your buckles right here on top, just so you kind of orient this correctly. You have these two middle contacts that are now touching. So the green wire and this black wire with the white stripe, now these are touching, okay? So forget, forget these, this black one, forget the red one, forget the uh, yellow and red one. In the off position, these two contacts inside the ignition switch right here are touching. When you're in just the auxiliary on position, you have just these, this black one and this red one are now making contact, okay? We'll talk about power, you know, which direction electricity is flowing all that in just a minute. But I just, just when you're on the on position, these left two on the screen are now in contact with each other. None of these other wires have anything to do with this middle position on the ignition, okay? Now, when we engage the starter, okay, we're, we, need, we know that we need to engage the starter solenoid. So let me just show how it, this guy that's completely out of place. And I, I honestly have no idea how I'm gonna put all this back in. Like, this is like uh, the guts and entrails just hanging out and I don't know where everything goes. So. We'll get creative when I finally uh, start, you know, making a wiring harness and, and electrical taping and, and zip tying and everything back together. But I've got this little guy hanging out here just randomly in space. Uh, this is the starter solenoid. And on the side of this is the actual, is the starter relay. So just a quick, uh, a relay is, a, it was a way to take a volt, a low voltage current and to actuate a large voltage current. So in other words, uh, a relay allows you to bring in just a little tiny little signal to basically make contact with two pieces of metal that are now going to give, it, give some other uh, electrical flow the full onion, right? Where that electrical flow will not, will not go through these puny wires, otherwise it would just burn the wire up. But can you see this, can you see this uh, yellow wire with the red stripe? The ground, this uh, green one is ground, and that's something that they did a good job on this go-kart is all of the ground wires are in fact green, which I like, that helps. Uh, 
So there's your yellow and red wire. Here's your yellow and red wire up in the ignition. So when I actually turn this ignition to the start position, so now I'll pretend you're hearing the starter motor go, right? You have the left two, red, black, and then the right one. You can actually see there's no pin available in the bottom of, of, of this harness plug. So this, and this is how the plug came, by the way. There's, it, it's a five wire. It's a five wire plug with a six wire. There's actually five wires in a six wire plug. And I don't know, you know, they just didn't bother to make a, a five wire plug only, but whatever. So in this case, key is engaged to, to start the motor. You have these two and this one all in contact with each other. So in this, in this scenario, forget the green and forget the kill switch. You've got these three guys right here. One, two, three, all engaged. And then when you let, when you let the, the key go back to the on position, what are we back to? We're simply back to the black and the red touching each other. Okay, so that said, we'll, we'll talk about direction of current flow and all that stuff in a second. Let's venture on to the back of the go-kart. Let's talk about the engine. Let's talk about wires coming out of the engine uh, before we talk about the CDI. So if you look at the engine here, this is a GY6 engine. It's a model 172MM. So it has a 72 millimeter piston, 250cc, um, and it, that's just the model. Okay, so how one of the questions that, that you might be asking yourself is, is i actually don't know if i have a dc or ac setup the guy who owned this thing before me and this is the situation i was in they totally messed this whole thing up i have no idea what system what platform i'm dealing with what is this engine designed to do as far as a cdi is concerned which cdi should i actually make sure is on this go-kart so if you count the number of wires coming out of this stator location, again, the stator is inside there. It's that electromagnet that's going to generate electricity when the engine's running. It generates AC power, alternating currents. What we It's the same type of power that comes out of our outlets in our house. So there's three wires that are going to, that are, it's because it's a three phase. There's three wires that come out that are going to connect into a plug that comes off of our rectifier regulator. What does a regu rectifier regulator do? A rectifier regulator converts AC voltage to DC voltage, okay? Um, so there's three wires that come out that have AC power, and then there's an extra two wires that come out, a green one, then like a blue one with a white stripe or a blue one with a yellow stripe on it. That's really important. There's five wires, count them, five coming out of this, uh, out of this block. Three here and two here. Okay, the ground wire, the green one, is just it just goes to ground. The blue one is going to go to your CDI. And then these three go to your rectifier regulator. That's really important. What we've just identified is this is designed to be a DC CDI setup. If this was an AC CDI setup, I would have one extra wire coming out of here that would likely be red and with a white stripe on it that would be specifically used and go directly to power the CDI, okay? Because there's not that extra wire there, this is a DC setup. This is designed for a DC CDI. So the CDI is actually going to get power from this guy right here. Uh, it's gonna be after the rectifier regulator. And when we get down to the computer and I have a chance to kind of show you the schematic, uh, that'll become more clear. Okay, so we've talked about uh, the, the, the stator wires coming out of there. We've talked about the rectifier regulator. Uh, this is the ignition coil. Basically, that's just what is, that connects up to your spark plug. That's all it does. But there's a wire that comes directly off of this, from, uh, to this from the CDI. Okay, so we've talked about pretty much the majority of the electrical. It's really, it seems complicated, but it's really not that complicated, especially if you can actually find a really clear diagram that will spell things out for you. Um, so, in the middle of the go kart here, I have I have some extra some some miscellaneous wires just kind of hanging out here, and I've hooked all these alligator clips up to it because I've been doing some experimenting in my lab, and now I've got it all figured out. So, uh, I've got three, four. I've got where's my black wire coming from the rectifier regulator right there. So I have five wires right here. 
<clears throat> okay, and uh, we're gonna get into uh, we're gonna get into the, de the the actual wiring into the CDI when we get to the schematic. But I have five wires right here. I have a green one that's just ground. I've got a blue one that's coming from here from the stator, like I told you about. There's a trigger wire. This is actually what uh, keeps the pulse. Uh, uh, basically from the cam that, that tells your CDI when it actually needs to emit a spark. This is the uh, black and white one from the kill switch. So actually this it's this wire right here on uh, the bottom middle on the, uh, on the ignition harness. And then I have this black one that actually, this comes directly from, sorry, was it just the black one? The black one comes directly from the rectifier regulator. And this is actually what's gonna power the CDI. Okay, so that said, we basically covered the electronics on this go-kart. We won't get into headlights or horns. I mean, there's other stuff, like there's a fan. Over, you can kind of see some, uh, some uh, electrical wires that go up there that go to my rear brake light and up to the radiator fan. Um, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna cover that uh, in this video, but I do wanna show you one more trick to determine what, like, what type what platform are you actually using? If you're if you're fortunate to buy a, a go kart or a buggy that actually is factory wired, then you don't have to do kind of uh, you don't have to know as much as what I just went over. One of the easiest things you can do to figure out if you need an AC or a DC CDI is I'm gonna, I'm actually going to turn power on, so I'm going to turn my battery charger on. That's going to act in, in the place of my battery, and then. I'm gonna come over here to my ignition switch and I'm gonna turn my ignition on and we're gonna see what happens here. What happens when I turn my ignition on? Oh, my headlight turned on. Okay, I'm gonna turn my ignition off. Okay, so what happens when I turn my ignition off? Headlight goes off. Okay, now I can actually turn my headlight off so that when I turn my ignition on, nothing happens. The point here is, is if you can turn your ignition on and your auxiliary power is working without the engine running, in other words, it's running off of your battery power, you have a DC setup, you need a DC CDI, period, okay? So there's some other complicated ways to figure out which one you need, but this is one. This is an easy way to figure out which setup do I actually have. If I think my CDI is bad, if my headlights turn on when, I, when my ignition is on the, in the on position, or, or if I have power you know, to my dash, or even if you have uh, the radiator fan that's turned on when you turn your key on, you have a D. You have an, a DC setup. An AC setup is going to depend solely on electricity coming out of your stator, and the only time your stator is generating electricity is when your crankshaft is turning. So uh, that's why uh, that's really the main difference between an AC and a DC C, uh, setup, as as far as how you can easily determine which CDI do I actually need to go build. All right, this is the end of part one. Uh, we'll move into part two, and we'll be sitting in front of my computer. Uh, with a really good schematic of this go-kart. So stay tuned.